Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto and thank you so much for tuning in today. Now if you followed my channel or followed any of my social media at all recently, you know that earlier this year I was one of the first to purchase the Husqvarna Norden 901. I completed a whole series of videos on the Norden and talked about what I liked, what I didn't like, and really showed you about the experience of riding and owning that bike. However, I've since sold the Norda 901 and replaced it with this, a KTM 890 Adventure R Rally. A lot of people have sent in questions and posted up asking why did I get rid of the Norden and also why did I choose to get this? So that's what today's video is about, just very simple. I'm gonna talk briefly about um, what were the factors that made me decide to sell the Norden and replace it with the 890 Rally. So first of all, I want to stand up for all the things, all the positive things I said about the Norden 901. Everything from the handling, the overall performance, the comfort, the value proposition. I'm still a huge, huge fan of the Norden and I recommend it to people all the time. And if you're looking for an adventure bike, I think it should be very, very high on your list for all the reasons I stated in that series of videos. Now, a lot of people know, and I did make some comments about this, I did have some issues with my Norden. The main thing that I had happen to mine was I had my rear shock fail at about 1,500 miles. And I can somewhat understand having a component failure during COVID times and all the logistical and supply chain issues that the world is having. Plus, it was a very brand new model that I think they tried to rush and get out there. But what I didn't really understand was sort of KTM's uh, lack of concern and kind of lack of customer care and their attitude towards the issue. Now, with that said, the failed shock and a few other minor issues I had, those really weren't the reasons that I decided to get rid of the Norden. And I could have easily forgiven those things and moved on. However, there are really three main factors that made me decide to go ahead and sell the Norden and move to this bike. So let's cover those right now. So the number one and probably primary factor for me has to do with a suspension. Now the Norden has a pretty decent suspension, pretty well damped, pretty well sprung suspension for a modern day midsize adventure bike. However, for me and for the way I ride, for the people I ride with, for the types of riding we do, it tends to be very aggressive. We push these bikes very, very hard for adventure bikes. And I where I live, we have a lot of really rough terrain, a lot of desert terrain, a lot of higher speed riding. And the Norden suspension is just not uh, stiff enough, not well damped enough, and, and not sprung for that kind of use. And also it lacks some critical adjustments like a compression adjustment for the rear shock. Now, I did look at upgrading the suspension. So uh, Husky and KTM, they offer a suspension upgrade uh, for the Norden. They basically offer this rally suspension, which is the WP Pro components. But here's the problem with that, is that I got a quote uh, for parts and labor to install those components on my Norden, and it was gonna be over $7,000 US to change the suspension. Now, I don't know about you, but spending $7,000 on suspension on a bike that only cost about $14,000, that's half the price of the bike. Didn't make sense to me. So in this 890 Rally, I get those WP Pro components as part of the bike, and I this bike will have the resale value uh, built into it because it's a limited edition. And we're gonna have videos, of course, about this Rally and going into depth about it, and that's not what we're doing right now. But this bike comes with that suspension already. I didn't have to do any upgrades, it just came with it. So the second reason I sold the Norden has to do with aftermarket parts. So the 790 and 890 have been out for about three or four years already, which means that there is a ton, a ton of aftermarket support. Everything's from, you know, rally kits to fairings to windshields to, you know, uh, different wheels and, and, and um, uh, you know, all sorts of components for it, suspension upgrades, seats, um, you know, whatever you might want, they have for this bike. And the Norden was so new, there just wasn't a lot of aftermarket availability yet. The third reason I decided to go with this bike is that uh, it has to do with wind buffeting. So the Norden, I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to fix the wind buffeting. It had horrible noise on my helmet uh, from that bike, and it really bugs me. I know some people say, oh, I'm nitpicking or whatever, being too picky, but it bugs me. I want to be able to ride an adventure touring bike. It is called adventure touring. You know, I want to be able to ride it all day, and the wind buffeting was just not good, even with earplugs. 
on this on this 790 and 890 platform with this different front fairing uh, with the addition of a windshield spoiler and making a few small tweaks actually the wind is quite quiet and, and very smooth and i'm actually very happy with it and it's something i couldn't get to with the norden so that makes a huge difference to me now, are there some things that I miss about the Husky? Yeah, absolutely. I think the styling on the Husky is amazing and very unique, and I like the styling better than this bike. Uh, the seat on the Husky is also amazingly comfortable. This seat is not comfortable whatsoever, so that's a huge difference. I really like the seat on the Husky. Styling was unique, and there was a lot of other things too. I like the dashboard, the TFT a little bit better on the Norden. I think it looked a little crisper, and the menu system was a little bit nicer. Um, but besides those things, yeah, I don't miss the, so the soggy suspension. I don't miss the wind buffeting, the lack of aftermarket parts. And yeah, to be honest, having some of those experiences with the, with the failures did kind of sour, sour me a little bit towards the Norden. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that to, in a way to not recommend that bike. I think it's still an amazing bike. And really underneath, it's the same bike as this. It's the same engine and same chassis is this and that leads me to why did i stick with ktm so having all these issues you know and a lot of people say ktms are unreliable well that's uh, another story it's really hard to measure reliability i don't think they're as bad as as you all think uh, most of the issues are quite minor but the reason i'm sticking with it is just performance it's just very simply performance the the lightweight the low center gravity the suspension performance the overall chassis dynamics the off-road ability the ground clearance this adventure bike in terms of off-road ability is so far beyond any other adventure bike out there that it makes it worth it for me to trade off, you know, a little bit of comfort or a little bit of reliability uh, to gain that, that performance advantage. And this bike is absolutely a hoot, absolutely a joy to ride. And I'm willing to put up with a few of the downsides because of that. <laughs> yeah! Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god. So I sincerely hope that helps explain my decision-making process and my situation. If you have further questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to get to them. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description below. Uh, thanks again. Please ride safe and I'll see you out there.